Good evening, everyone. Today is the last Sunday before we are going to celebrate Christmas. And as you can see, we have lit up. Well, it looks like there's only three lit up, but there's a little light in the, the really tall one. Okay, so have faith that all of them are lit. Okay. I hope our hearts are all prepared to receive Jesus as well, because He indeed is coming to us. And to, uh, to prepare ourselves to receive Jesus so that He may be born in our lives, I want to talk today about a very important virtue in Christian life. Does anybody know what a virtue is? Anybody? No? Sorry? Holiness? Well, virtues sometimes give you uh, holiness as well. Virtue is another word for good habits. Good habits. Habits that help us to act well. Now, do you think obedience could be a virtue, a good habit that help us to act well? You see, ever since Hegel, uh, we have this notion of uh, the thesis, antithesis, and uh, overcoming, and then starting all over. And this is this is this is the, this has been the history for the last three or four centuries: um, poor against the rich, man against women, heterosexuals against homosexuals. Uh, the North against the South, and the East against the North, the Muslims against the West, all kinds of stuff. So we always think in terms of powering and uh, um, uh, uh, um, subjecting others to us. And to think that we have to obey is a very difficult reality to swallow and to accept in our lives. But... Mary today says, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. Did you ever say to anybody, Here I am. I am your servant, and I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. Did you ever say that to anybody? No? Well, what is the foundation of Mary's answer? You see, we lost trust in the Lord. We have, we have become so accustomed to thinking of one thing against another, we often think that God takes away our freedom, that God takes away our happiness. And what He's interested in is that we be miserable. Oh man, you go to church and the priest tells you, you can't do this, you can't do that, and you, don't, you should do this, and you should do that, and you know, everything in life that is good is either a sin or you get fat. Right? That's how we think. You, know, you could laugh sometimes. <laughs> but why was Mary able to obey the Lord? You see, we Christians, we don't see our relationships between ourselves, between us and the parents, between the friends, and most of all, between God and us as being one against the other. That uh, God wants to subjugate us so that He can do whatever He wants. It's not like the proletariat, like Marx said, against the bourgeois or the capital. It is, in Mary's mind, God is a loving Father. And this is a very, very important concept that we have to understand, but also a concept that we have to live. In our relationship with the Lord, we have to be trusting. We have to understand that He loves us. And this is what Christmas is all about. Jesus comes to restore our trust in the Lord. You look at, well, uh, now we have the candles, but I'm sure the sisters tomorrow will begin to put in the nativity scene over here. And you're going to see that, uh, well, uh, uh, unfortunately, Today, we don't see a lot of nativity scenes. Uh, it's Christmas, it's about a nativity scene. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Uh, but I'm sure you're going to see some of it around. Some of it on your uh, Christmas cards. Some of it 
I don't know, maybe you bought that uh, um, the bread uh, nativity scene that uh, your friends have made and you have it at your house. And you look at it, and there are many, many things that we can, we can learn from that scene. But the most striking thing is that there is obedience. Jesus obeys his Father's will. Father didn't say, well, you know, get down there and, you know, I think you'll have to kind of like suffer and die. Well, that's the pay price that you have to pay. But what God was thinking is that, well, these people, they need your help. They need our help. And whatever price that has to be paid. Do you think God would be like, yes, Jesus, you go and suffer, okay? I'm going to enjoy myself over here in heaven. No, no, no father is like that. Father knows that a son will go there, will be born in a manger. Manger sounds so nice now. Huh? But you try to go to a, a farm and try to sit inside a, uh, inside a bowl where uh, cows and uh, horses eat. It's not all that funny. It's not clean. It's not hygienic. Uh, and eventually, the son will have to die. And do you, what would have... What would have happened in the father's heart when he saw his son being born in a stable, in a manger? But Jesus comes and he says, you know what? Not my will, but your will, Lord. Mary says, well, I don't know how this all, all this is going to happen, but I trust you, Lord. This is what Jesus is coming to teach us at this Christmas. We suffer so much because we can't trust anybody. We don't trust our parents. We don't even trust our husbands. We don't trust our wives. We don't trust our kids. We don't trust our governments. And because there's so much intrigue in our hearts, and because there's, uh, it, it, our hearts are never, never at peace because we can't trust anybody, that's why there's darkness in the world. And Jesus comes to say that, you know what? Obedience is key to our happiness. What happened in the Garden of Eden? Adam and Eve could not trust the Lord. The Lord said, do whatever you want, but this fruit do not eat because you will not be happy. Oh yeah? You think we're not? Oh, come on God, you're fooling me. I will not obey you. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to take the apple and eat it too. And that's what they did. And that's when everything began to crumble. And Jesus comes to restore that relation, our relationship with the Lord, that trusting relationship. Whatever God tells me must be good for me. Can you believe that? I don't think so. How often the Lord speaks in my heart. You know what? Be honest. Oh no, you know what? If I'm honest, I'm going to be stupid. No, how am I, how am I going to get up in my uh, uh, ladder of my um, uh, career if I'm always honest? Uh, you think that, that guy is nice to me because he's just nice? No, he wants something from me. We always distrust others. We always even distrust our Lord. And that's what brings darkness into our hearts. And Mary, in all her adverse circumstances, imagine this. I mean, I'm supposed to give birth to the Son of God. And what the heck is this? In a garage? Come on. But because she said, I am the servant of the Lord. I trust in the Lord. The servant, the word servant, that's how Mary sees herself. But God does not see Mary as servant, but God sees Mary as his daughter. And we need to work on this. We have to transform our hearts during this Christmas so that we may have that deep trust in the Lord, that he loves us. And whatever he tells us must be key to my happiness. Let us contemplate during this Christmas the nativity scene.
and see how Jesus comes to obey. Let us contemplate how Mary presents herself as a servant and she trusts. And you know what? When there is love, obedience is not difficult. You know, when you go to Kwesa and you're, uh, you know, the lady or the, the guy ab above you tells you to do this and do that, well, I don't think you'll ever be happy. But what if that person was somebody you truly love? Your lover, you know, uh, lovers do anything. You know, middle of the night, uh, honey, I think it's cold. And if you really love that person, then you go turn on the heat, right? I, if you don't love that person, you, you, go, you, you go turn on the heat, right? But if you love the person, then, well, you go. No mother complains because she has to serve a baby who's sick during the night because mother loves the baby. When there is that loving relationship, serving and obeying comes naturally. Let us learn during this Christmas that trust that Mary had, that trust that Joseph had, that trust that Jesus had in God, that God is good and that He wants for all of us one thing, that is our happiness. And to achieve our happiness, we have to trust in the Lord and obey His commandments that he, whenever He speaks in our conscience. Amen.